and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in our community recently, particularly the Reverend Cashin Uhas, CP, beloved brother, uncle, great uncle, former rector of St. Anne's Monastery and Basilica, who offered the invocation and benediction during the 2004 swearing-in ceremony of Scranton City Council, and dear friend to my late parents, Robert D. Walsh, loving son, brother, grandson, nephew, and my former student, Seal D. Hughes, devoted mother of our friend Bill, grandmother and aunt, Anne Rose Halpin, beloved mother of our friend Grace, grandmother, great-grandmother, and sister. Jack Irwin Davis, Sr., loving husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and 25-year veteran of the Scranton Fire Department. Linnell Blackwell, devoted mother of Scranton OECD employee, Fania, grandmother, sister, and aunt. Midge Lee, beloved mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, sister, aunt, and mother-in-law of our friend Carolyn, and their dear families and many friends who suffer their loss. Also, please keep in your prayers Dr. Michael Riley, who underwent surgery today. Roll call, please. Here. 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 Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A, comparison of city funds distributed in 2012 and 2013 from the single tax office. Are there any comments? If not, received in file. 3B. Minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Meeting held January 23rd, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Minutes of the Composite Pension Board's regular meeting held January 23rd, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you, Mrs. Craig. Do any council members have announcements at this time? I would just um, like to mention with the parade coming up, I'd hope that everyone um, tries to remain safe, um, don't drink and drive, and enjoy yourself um, downtown for the parade and many festivities uh, throughout the city, both this week and for uh, actual St. Patrick's Day coming up. And that's all. Is there anyone else? Councilman McGough is unable to attend tonight's meeting. The Lou Rusby Jr. Foundation and State Representative Frank Farina will conduct the first annual Breakfast of Hope on Sunday, March 17, 2013, beginning with registration at 9.30 a.m. at Rossi's Ristorante, 1501 Main Street in Archibald. Tickets are $17 for adults, $12 for children aged 4 to 12, and free for children 3 and under. Advanced ticket purchase is highly recommended. Contact Carla Farina at 570-687-3500 or Teresa Stan at 570-840-2680. The LRJ Foundation is dedicated to hope, guidance, and education 
for suicide prevention and mental health awareness and supplies schools in Lackawanna, Wayne, and Pike counties with educational teaching packets on suicide prevention for staff and students. Please support this very worthy endeavor. And finally, I'd like to recognize the officers of the Scranton region of the Antique Automobile Club of America, particularly its president and our good friend Michael Passero, the family of the late James Clee, dedicated former Scranton police chief, as well as acting police chief Carl Graziano and the members of the Scranton Police Department of whom we are so very proud. To my great regret, I was unable to attend last week's presentation of the Chief James Clee Memorial Plaque by Mr. Passero and the outstanding Antique Auto Club that Jim Clee so loved and helped to establish. And so tonight, I'd like to say to his dear children and family members, Jimmy was a dedicated public servant and a remarkable, irreplaceable gentleman who remains well-loved admired and respected by all he knew, served and protected. Many thanks to Mr. Passero, Chief Graziano, and Chief Clee's daughters for, for sharing this special occasion with our community. And that's it. Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. Thank you, Council. Good evening. I'm Good evening. glad to see a couple of you feeling better. Thank you. I, I realize that many people in Scranton don't watch this program because the subject matter means <coughs> nothing to them, but plenty of, of others want to be informed. The subject matter I'm speaking of clearly monitors our lives. It affects the way we vote sometimes. You know, for instance, I'm talking about this gun situation that everybody I've talked to seems to think it was a lot more serious than the, the district attorney's office did. I've, I've heard a dozen or 15 people say it just, a, it just looks like gross favoritism was showing here an average person wouldn't get such a liberal outcome. I, w I won't keep harping on this, but there's, this wasn't handled right. It just looked like a, it was swept under the rug, a cover-up of a cock and bull story to people. You know, this city government, if, if I could call it that, it it, it reminds me of like when I, when I watch this Robin Hood movies the, the, the king tells the sheriff of Nottingham the peasants aren't paying enough taxes they're not taxed enough go tax them see Hester's leaving town raise the taxes What, what, whatever's done, all, that's all that it, we hear, raise the taxes. The developers have cheated us people out of building permits year after year, and nothing's done. Just raise the taxes to cover it. The SPA needs $10 million for the garages. Instead of closing two of them, which is the simple best thing to do, raise the taxes so we can repair the garages. A hundred dollar a year man, uh, an hour man, sitting there babysitting for forty thousand dollars a year, doesn't see that there's half the income coming in. Who's supposed to suffer the loss? You know, it'd be the same thing. Raise the taxes. 
The majority of people in the city are paying 60% of the taxes for the schools and don't use them. I don't use them. I haven't used them for 30 or 40 years. This, this is, you, you've just, there's got to be a better solution than just borrowing and raising taxes every, every time we turn around. You know, I realize councils had 10 years of gross incompetence and mismanagement from, from the Doherty administration. And besides bankruptcy, I don't know what, what, what else to advocate, but you cannot keep punishing people that have property like this. These nonprofits have destroyed our tax base and it's shrinking and shrinking all around us. You know, I, I go out here and, and I talk to somebody at the grocery store and here and there. I talk, to, like I've mentioned, I talk to a lot of professional people. They, they just washed up with the city. It, it seems like people aren't thinking of the future of the city. You're, you're a teacher. You got, where are these children supposed to go in, in 10 or 15 years when they inherit a, a, like a half a billion dollars worth of, of bills and so forth? It, that's where we are. Something got to be done besides borrow and, and raise taxes. It's just, it's just, it's just reach, we're not getting nothing for our money. You know, I keep telling you, I can't walk down the street because people park on the sidewalk. Every place, I, I don't have no curbs. My flood yards, it, it, nothing's ever repaired. Now my taxes are twice what they were when I bought the house. There's just got to be a better solution. And, and I hope one of our, our new Thank political you. people come for it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Ozzie Quinn. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Ozzie Quinn, Scranton Taxpayers Association Incorporated. First, I want to give a commercial that the Taxpayers Association, thank you, Frank, for announcing this last week. I know Jack was sick. That the uh, we held our meeting on Tuesday, and if you uh, Google ECTV, you'll find out the date and the time of when this is going to be replayed. It's very interesting because Representative Kevin Haggerty attended, he was the guest, and there, he spoke about the many issues uh, prevalent today in, in the city and statewide, and uh, I think uh, it's, it's, it was a good meeting. Uh, next two things I'm asking you, the first one I'm asking you to consider seriously, the last one I want to ask you to consider as much as you can, okay? To, to, to enact. The first one is that it came, uh, I have come to the conclusion that with everything being shot down that you're trying to do, okay, in regards to various, to pay off the, 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 the debt we owe, that uh, we have to have a meeting with the state representatives, I mean the council and the mayor, the state representatives and the state senator. Uh, the only way I can see it's getting bailed out of this situation is we don't want to go through uh, what's in bankruptcy, but the state, the state are the ones that put the albatross around our neck 21 years ago, and they should be able to sit down and, and talk about this intelligently and, and try to help the city with their finances, be it a no interest loan or grant or whatever, or a combination. I ask you to consider that. The other thing I urge you to consider, and that is to ask the district attorney to do a investigation of Scranton's OECD. What I mean is this here, uh, and all due respect, Mr. Rogan, this has nothing to do with reflection on you, this is before you came here. Uh, you've been reading off uh, various loans that 
were paid off, various loans that are that people are behind on, don't know where they're going with them. And tonight you're supposed to read off another list of deadbeats, okay? If you take that list, those three lists, and take the names over and get the Doherty campaign finance chair books, okay? And compare who got the loan, well, who gave large uh, donations to Mr. Doherty, you're gonna see that they match. That's collusion in my books. That is in, in, uh, unequivocally collusion. It's, it's, it's this tantamount is going and saying, you know, if you, I'll give you $500, if, if you give me the what's in, if you give me this a bid, if you give me something or you give me a job, you give my cousin a job. And uh, this is what happened. And, uh, I, and the DA is sitting down there. And he knows, and, uh, he knows that he, there's things going on. I've asked him, but he just don't even pay, don't even, don't even, uh, answer with a letter or a reply. Why? Mostly because the DA is so political, it's unbelievable. I don't think that's going to help me very much if I get arrested. But uh, I, I really hope that, and I know Mr. Ogden, that you just came on board with the OECD two years, and you are, but you know, a lot of the audit that has $11 million missing and I mean that the city has to come up with $11 million of uh, non-federal funds. A lot of that audit has to do with, with these loans and grants that you're talking about. And the fact that they weren't eligible for these loans and grants. And I don't know if you realize that. And I don't know if anybody realizes that. I realize it because I'm looking into it. And they tell me in Washington that they did not meet the criteria of meeting low-income jobs, things like that. All, all, any criteria that you have to get along. So, I mean, it's, it's serious, it's a mess. Now, anybody, you had to wait how long for this list? Now, if you're in, uh, if you're, and I know, they have Excel program down there. If I'm having an Excel program on my computer, which they should have, I would take that loan and I would put it in there, and I would put it in a number of years, and if there's any interest, and I would just be able to, every payment, I'd be able to see who pays every, month, every week or every month, whatever the payment may be, what it's reduced to, and find out what the balance is. And I could do that for you, I should be able to do that for you in five minutes. Not three weeks, and we're still waiting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just add to what Mr. Quinn said with regard to the request for those that loan portfolio. Um, we waited over a year to get that response, and um, I think you had mentioned um, a meeting between council and state representatives. I can tell you that I've met a number of times with our state senator, John Blake, uh, obviously uh, to no avail. Uh, I know he's met with the mayor as well, but I would not be adverse to asking uh, state representative, yes, st we can ask, that's fine, state representative Haggerty and Flynn and Senator Blake to a public caucus to discuss the state of the city and what assistance the city in, or the state intends to extend to the city in 2013 and going forward as well. Thank you. So, uh, Mrs. Craik, if you would send letters, please, to those three gentlemen requesting that caucus for the purpose described. Our next speaker is Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Um, just like to begin tonight. Uh, Good evening. By discussing uh, the motion, the, the request to uh, have our state senators and representatives appear before Council <coughs> in the caucus. I do feel that if these. Uh, elected leaders do have a, a sincere interest in uh, 
moving the city forward and looking out for the taxpayers that they do uh, represent, that they would not have any issue with coming forward here in a public setting and discussing the issues that the city currently faces. Uh, certainly at this point in time, the city faces tremendous challenges, and it requires all of our elected leaders to come together and find solutions to resolve these issues once and for all so that the city of Scranton does have a bright future. Uh, in regards to the parking garages, uh, it was reported that uh, they're in need of up to $10 million in repairs. Uh, certainly not surprised by that. I, I know for quite some time that this just has been continuing to escalate and that these parking garages have been in disrepair for many years now. Um, we've had many issues with, you know, um, you know, feces and other inappropriate paraphernalia. Um, you know, homeless people taking shelter, um, a lot of issues that certainly uh, have been uh, brushed aside and, and we haven't taken serious. Um, my only question would be, and I think it's the most important question here, is where do we intend on coming up with any funding that may be necessary to repair these garages? Obviously, um, we can't let this slip under the cracks. Uh, if these garages do need repair, it's something we do need to take serious, but at the same time, uh, a city that's strapped for cash uh, certainly doesn't have $10 million to come up with. So I guess my question tonight would be is where do we intend on coming up with any necessary funding that we may need later on down the road? In my opinion, there is no source for those repairs. Um, right now, the city is in a position where it certainly must prioritize. And in terms of the parking garages, the number one priority is repayment of the bond issues. And I know that uh, one payment is forthcoming in March, I believe, the 15th, and uh, the city will be able to meet that. But there are additional uh, payments coming around in June, September, and December, I believe. And it's imperative that the city meet those financial obligations. So there simply is no source of revenue for garage repairs at this time, and I don't see that forthcoming in the next year or two as well. And it's, it's also just my opinion and belief that um, there's probably going to be an issue later on with coming up with funding to make these bond payments as well. And I think that's a, a really uh, alarming thing to look at is that we're going to struggle to make these payments. And, and it's once again going to fall on the city's shoulders and, and certainly the taxpayers of this city um, and that's why it's so important that we come up with a plan to address this. And, and I think, you know, for the last few weeks we've discussed the, uh, the idea uh, with Standard Parking when they came in during that caucus and discussed a, uh, you know, a, a street meter uh, program that allows us to generate more revenue. Whether it's increased rates, I know there were many concerns from businesses in the community, taxpayers as well. Um, there was talks of, you know, Saturday operations and, and certainly some of those questions still need to be addressed. But I think the further we continue to just kick this can down the road and, and allow this to not uh, come in, into effect, I think we're certainly putting ourselves in a tough spot later on down the road. And, and obviously the taxpayers are going to have to carry the load. And, and I, I know that this council is committed to uh, putting a program together. Um, you know, I appreciate all the businesses and the residents who have come forward and address concerns. But I also think they need to understand, as, as I've said before, that without any action taken, uh, the burden is going to be placed on them. And I think these are things that we have to keep in mind is do we want to look at additional tax increases to come up with the revenue or do we want to implement some sort of innovative plan that allows us to generate revenue so that we can meet these obligations so that we can repair our garages. You know, it's, it's pretty embarrassing that we don't even have the money to repair our garages. I mean, we've certainly allowed ourselves to become a laughing stock and we've made a mockery of ourselves because this administration has just um, ignored the essential priorities. And they've played a lot of politics and have put us in a really difficult situation. Um, I'd like to move on to a, another issue. Uh, it was brought to my attention that um, this is a, a request that was made by a resident that I talked to. Um, apparently a large pothole is formed on the Harrison Avenue Bridge. Um, makes it a little difficult to get around and, and certainly when you're, when you're trying to avoid it, um, you can be merging in oncoming traffic and certainly an accident uh, could be uh, in, in the makes there. So perhaps we could maybe send a letter to uh, Mr. Dewar asking him to maybe take a look at it. I'd appreciate that. Um, we talked tonight, it was brought up earlier about regarding bankruptcy. And, you know, Mr. Allman talked about um, not wanting to punish the residents of this city. And I think while we want to stay on that subject about punishing, 
Um, we need to understand one thing, that bankruptcy is, is the ultimate punishment. And I've been quite repetitive on this whole bankruptcy <laughs> issue in, in my stance that I've taken against it, that I do not feel it's the solution to the city's problems, regardless of what others may want to say. Um, if you think bankruptcy is just going to overnight turn our problems around, um, you're wrong. It's not going to. Um, we don't want to see any burdens placed on the taxpayers. But that will happen with a bankruptcy filing. Um, the services that we take pride in every day, our police protection, our, our fire protection, our DPW, all those things that we, we, we may take for granted time and time again, we won't see because they will be reduced with a bankruptcy. And I'm hopeful that in, in an effort to generate revenue and to alleviate the burden, it was brought up last week that we want to look into a public safety fee on nonprofits, and I'm hopeful that we're serious and, and we'll stay committed to doing that because the taxpayers have been punished enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Carrera, if we could uh, please send a letter to Mr. Dewar regarding uh, the pothole that Mr. Miller mentioned on Harrison Avenue. Thank you. Our next speaker is Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Nice to have you back, Mrs. Evans. I hope you're feeling better. Thank you. Uh, you know, I usually don't come up here and talk about other speakers, but as Doug says, week after week, Mr. Elman comes up here and complains about taxes. And the next breath, he says, we should file for bankruptcy. Well, I told him before, I said, don't you realize if we have a receiver come in, you're complaining about taxes now? A receiver could come in and raise your taxes 125%, if not more. Mm -hmm. So that's... Bankruptcy is not the answer if you're complaining about paying taxes. Uh, moving on. Uh, just a quick question about the, the mayor's salary. It's going to be $75,000 after four years. Will that be permanent? Yes. I'm going from then? Okay, yes. good. I think that's a good idea. Unlike Mr. McGough's idea to put it back to 50000 I thought that was wrong. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're talking about parking meters. And I've gone by here a bunch of times. The 700 block of Madison Avenue, it's the block up from the regional hospital. There are two apartment buildings there and a single house, and there's meters in front of those buildings. I don't know why there would be meters in front of places where people are living. Mm -hmm. I know if I lived there, I'd be furious about that. These people have to pay to park in front of their houses? I think that's ridiculous. We can look into it's that. It's the 700 block of uh, Madison. Madison. It's, uh, there's, like, there's those two buildings, a private home, and then the Von Koch building is next to that. But, but why there's meters in front of residences is beyond me. And it's been that way for years. Mm -hmm. I can't believe these people haven't complained. Perhaps they're not operating. Uh, Do maybe you know? Not. But nevertheless, they can still be removed and placed Absolutely. elsewhere where they can be useful. Yeah. Okay, two weeks ago, Councilman Rogan commented about uh, responses he got from uh, Director Dewar, DPW. Uh, I guess it's safe to say none of them were from the response requests I put in. No, um, it, was, it was nice to have that stack of about 10 responses, but I think there's probably a few hundred or maybe a thousand outstanding over the last Well, the one years. request I did make uh, back in uh, November, the, the street sign where I live was stolen. Two Mondays ago, <laughs> that was replaced in the corner of Bulwer Street, North Rebecca Avenue. There's one problem. It's North Rebecca Avenue, and the sign it says North Rebecca Street. <laughs> That's incorrect. The sign was made incorrectly. And I have uh, these things in writing. I'll give them to Ms. Carrera when I'm done. <coughs> so I don't know whoever made that sign. It's wrong. And uh, another street sign, the corner of Price Street and North Lincoln. And I have that in writing. That sign is faded to the point where you can't even see it. So uh, that's, that's like if, if an emergency vehicle is looking for that area. Mm -hmm. And I do have that written down. Uh, uh, lastly, uh, article of paper today about the DA finding no wrongdoing with Liz Randall losing her, oh, gave her, giving her gun to someone that lost it. Well, 
maybe that's not a crime, but to me it shows a lack of responsibility and judgment. She gave her gun to somebody to clean, and this person had a shady background to begin with. If you're a gun owner, you should know where that gun is at all times, 24-7. And this gun was found on the street. Thank God no criminal found this gun and used it in a crime. And she wants to run our city. Uh, I don't think she has the judgment to run our city and bring us out of the terrible situation that we're in with our finances. Losing a gun is just, like I said, it's a lack of responsibility and judgment. If she wanted it clean, she should have taken it to a gun shop, have it done professionally. Don't give it to someone with a shady background. That's not someone I want running this city. Uh, that's all I have this week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Spindler, thank you very much for presenting your requests in writing to, to our office. I appreciate, I appreciate the fact that you comply with the rules and requests made uh, by council. And I forgot to say it's on there too about the, uh, my corridor, it's deteriorating more and more. Okay. Hasn't been fixed. I know many requests have been sent in. Yes. Thank Maybe you. Maybe another one can be sent, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who cares to address council? Andy Sprague, Citizens of Scranton, Fellow Scrantonians. I noticed in your legislation C, I guess it's 5C, the establishing of uh, on street parking requested by the hospital. Why would the hospital with three parking garage request on street parking? And they did the study, of course, when they do a study. How is that study going to turn out? I don't quite understand why they would want nine on-street parking spaces. And I expect if they get them, they will be metered. Mm -hmm. And that would be more of a slap in the face to them than anything else. I don't understand it. They got three garages, and yet they want on-street parking. You'll never know. Okay. Uh, we don't have much responsibility with this grant in Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority, do we really? No, no. I believe um, that the mayor makes appointments to uh, that, uh, that committee, um, but I know uh, oftentimes the city or the county would be used as a pass-through for uh, loans that they're obtaining for various uh, organizations. So that's what's occurring on tonight's agenda. And the, right, city, right. the city does not guarantee no, that No, it's two and a half million. I just was worried about the authority. Who guarantees the authority? I don't know. I don't care what they do. The question is, if they are guaranteeing loans, how does that reflect on the city? I know the people that get the loans are supposed to be responsible <laughs> for the loans. But I just wondered how that works. Because, you know, Lackawanna College dug into that many, many times, that fund, and got money for them mm -hmm. for various projects. And I just wondered, as they keep getting into these, you know, these projects, what is the legal responsibility of either Lackawanna County or the city of Scranton, should any of these projects fall through? being that they were out there recommending it. I just wondered, it was a curiosity. Would you like us to um, make that request of the authority for you to respond? Well, you could, it's for everybody in the city in Lackawanna County, it's not just for me. Mm -hmm. it's, should there be any way around the thing that we could be hit for some of these things that are being done, then I would like to know about it, and I would like council to know about it. In fact, it's more important for you to know about it than for me. Because you're there for the future. I'm in there at present. For how long, I don't know, but I'm here at present. But council will be there in the future, long after I'm in the ground. 
So the more they learn about anything with these different authorities or anything that may even slip in is a bonus. They should know it. Well, that's what I'm going to talk about. There, everything else is fairly good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Craig, if we could send a letter to that uh, organization or group asking uh, what their responsibility is in terms of the debt. I know that the city is not responsible. Um, that is a, a matter of fact. But we certainly can ask what their responsibilities would be. Is there anyone else who? Oh. Good evening, Dave Dobson. I have some uh, articles that I reprinted. Uh, you give it to two people. You have to sign it, Peter. <laughs> Thank you. And if you'd it's, state it's a your very name, please. What's that? State your name, please. Oh, my name is Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton. Taxes paid. Uh, now, they're on economics, uh, so it might be something that you're interested in. It has something to do with the trade deficit and why government spending doesn't always help to uh, increase. I, sorry, Pat, I ran out of ink, so if, if you really hassle me when I get a new uh, cartridge or maybe somebody could pass it I'll over. I'll make a copy me. after the meeting. What's that? I'll make a copy after Alrighty. the meeting. All righty. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, now, I have two questions here, and I decided to be a gentleman and put them in writing for a change. Why did the county commissioners decline insurance consolidation of city and county consortium? And uh, is it possible to study tax-exempt percentages and find ways of locking out further erosion of our tax base? And does it does council think it's prudent to answer this question before we find even higher amounts of city uh, properties become exempt? Uh, currently, we're at 33%, and our hole in our budget is about 30, 33% of uh, property taxes. If we had 150% of more property taxes, we wouldn't have a hole in the budget. So I'll give this to Ms. Uh, I know that we had already sent a letter to the commissioners regarding um, um, the issue of their declining to participate in a health care consortium. They have not responded as yet. Mm -hmm. um, with regard to um, the second issue, um, you know, it's unfortunate, but even the state seems to be taking increased measures. I, I know that um, our state senator, John Blake, is involved in this, taking increased measures to protect the right, nonprofit right. standing of tax exempts. Uh, and That's also, you know, while we're on the topic of the county, the, the county commissioners were not now, not all three, but two of three were not terribly interested in joining efforts with the city and the school district in terms of pursuing pilots from tax exempts. Mm -hmm. So it's a very difficult situation when you have um, elements of government that appear to be working against the citizens to the benefit of the nonprofit community. We're about 30% of the population of the county, and so we have two to one lined up against us. But I think it would be interesting to look into the feasibility of a study. I've gotten involved with the Taxpayer Association again, and maybe uh, we could get some legal advice on that. And it's almost a deal for the Supreme Court because it's gone too far. Everybody's putting them here, and uh, just pay us, you know. Uh, and last week there was an article on dead meters, and I noticed quite a few of them when I parked downtown. Uh, and Mr. Joyce commented on it, and uh, 
I would say it was around the 14th of February. I think it was the second week, uh, the meeting of February, that I parked in front of a dead meter, which I didn't owe anything mm -hmm. at that time. But, uh, you know, I, I noticed the whole row in front of Guild Studios was dead. And it's a shame that these corporations want us to trust them when they're doing such shoddy work. I mean, somebody, they're supposed to be taking care of it and they're not. So how do we sign off on a, on a deal with them? Uh, I think they've undermined our trust quite a bit and they have some answering to do. Lucy, you got mm -hmm. some explaining to do. Uh, there's a low cost neuter clinic the number is 570-994-5846. It's EPAA. It's $60 for a cat. We have some terrible animal problems in the city. And uh, some people are moving out of apartments and they just push the cat out the door, non-neutered, and we have a problem. Uh, I like to express support for the current council and I hope it'll remain similar. Uh, I hope you people will rerun again, and I'm sorry for all the, uh, all the harassment you've got out of the times and so forth, but we need you. Uncle Sam needs you. And uh, also, I'd like to see, uh, looked into uh, for the new mayor a term limit of two terms, so we don't get any more entrenchment. Uh, than we already have had. Uh, after, after the second term, I think whoever is in there kind of wears out there. Uh, uh, legislating, legislators are different because you have people coming in and out. And, uh, they, uh, there's nobody up there that has more than maybe 20% control of things anyway. And uh, the Golden Parrot goes to Congress now. Uh, we have a sequester, and they're looking at uh, they're looking at Social Security. One of my neighbors has 20 cents a week left over after her insurance premium increase, and they want to change down chain down the CPI and so forth. 20 cents a week. I mean, that's mighty generous of them, you know. So, uh, unless you want your mother-in-law dropped off on your front doorstep someday by a couple orderlies. <laughs> uh, you better think about it, even young and old. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Your name? Oh, my Rich name is Lee Morgan. Um, I generally forget to say that all the time. Well, we all, we all know, but so that the people at home, just in case you get new viewers. Oh, okay. Um, you know, listening to prior speakers, you know, speak about the state of the city, I think it's important to realize that what's really happened here is so many voters have walked away from the polls and so many voters vote without knowing what they're voting for that I'm not surprised that we find ourselves where we are. Um, my opinion is that, you know, people need to really be informed before they make a vote. Um, I don't think the city is that much different than the county or the state or the federal government, but the federal government is the lucky party because they can print money. Um, with that said, I'd like to say, uh, and I don't know if Mr. Rogan is allowed to respond or not, but um, Mr. Rogan, uh, from what I've been led to believe, and I could be wrong, but uh, I believe I read in the newspaper that you're for a, a partial privatization of DPW. Do you want me to respond now? Sure. Sure. Um, I think something has to be done in our Department of Public Works to save money. I would prefer not to privatize and collect garbage in four days and have a fifth day for maintenance and repairs. If that can't be negotiated, then privatization is, is an option. Okay. Now, I don't, I don't retract last week's statement in regards to 
the city's unions picking bad candidates and backing bad candidates for public office. I think that's taken us the wrong way, but I would like to say something about privatization. Now, I don't know if you know anything about Carbondale, but they privatized their trash collection. And I'm just curious what you believe a living wage to be, because their drivers make $11, and the people putting the garbage in the back of the truck make minimum wage. And I just think that communities can't balance their budgets on the back of the people who work in their cities. I don't see a big difference between myself and any employee in this city, because we all go to work to do one thing, to earn a living and do the best job we can possibly do when we're at work. And I just think that we keep listening to the federal government and government on every, every level saying that the solutions to our problems are that we've got to privatize and, well, we, we can't run, like the governor said, we can't run the lottery now and they want to sell the liquor stores and, well, in the end, the people aren't going to have anything except massive debt, no assets, and the company's going to own everything. And this country's in really bad shape. We have a lack of leadership in the unions because too many times they go off on tangents that are very destructive. But when you listen to what's taking place in the federal government in regards to trade and in regards to Western Pennsylvania and in regards to our natural gas boom, I mean, they're saying that we've got to keep Chinese people working, making products for us because they work so cheap. And I just think that if we keep going to the lowest prom denominator, we're going to have a society of people that just make no wages, and we're going to become a two-class society with no, no blue-collar middle class, just the serfs and the leaders. And I mean, when you know, you sit here, you listen to people discuss issues, and everybody's afraid of the word bankruptcy. But when you go and you talk to the people who live in the city, they can't pay anymore. So what's the solution? We're talking about the parking garages. I talked to Mr. Scopoletti about the condition of the parking garages. The people he had working for him were doing all they could with their limited abilities. Everybody knew where the parking authority was. And I'm just saying that, you know, maybe it's time for the voters to wake up. Because uh, you can just see the way things are taking place here. Look at the investigation by the FBI of the court system. They're going after the assistant court administrator and the guardian. No judges. I think. Ozzy brought up about an investigation by the district attorney. I think the FBI needs to go in and investigate the district attorney and the things he does, okay? Because I wouldn't ask the district attorney to do an investigation for me because I'm fairly versed in his office and I have no faith in him or his office. I've been out here a long time. I've studied a lot of things and I've paid a lot of attention. And I just am very troubled by where we find ourselves. But I think that. I don't know where the residents of the city are going to get the money to meet the city's debts, but it's not a big secret where we find ourselves because for over 20 years something could have been done and it wasn't. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Dave Ferranis, for instance. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Welcome back, Mrs. Evans. I hope you feel better. Thank you. A couple of weeks ago on The View, even Langora was on as a guest. And they were asking her if she was going to run for office because she was a big supporter of President Obama. She helped with his campaign. And she said the following. The most power is with the citizen, with everyone who is not a politician. You can affect policy. Which brings me to my point. I believe it's every person's right to come in front of city council or wherever else they may be able to speak and voice their opinion about people that are running for office, any office, whether it be in Scranton, uh, city council, school board, whatever, mayor, and express how they feel and shed some light on what they know or what they feel they know and about the candidates that are running. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I came here and I spoke about Bill Courtright and 
some of the things he was doing in his campaign for mayor. And Mr. Joyce, uh, I spoke with you later, and you told me that you felt it was okay that I, I said what I said after you thought about it. Is that right? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make it clear that a person does have a right to come to this podium and say what they choose about a candidate because I think it's very important that the people in this city know the qualities, the character of the people that are going to be running this city. So I definitely think speaking about someone running for office, it's very much city business. I mean, they're going to be handling all our finances. They're the ones that are going to raise our taxes. They're the ones that are going to pass the buck on to us. I think it's very imperative that we know everything we can about these people. And I share some of my views, and just like everybody has a right to come and express their views. But I think it's important that the electorate is informed. Uh, I'll give you an example. Maybe people didn't see this, but I saw it and it never left my mind. A couple months ago, Gary Lewis spoke. And while he was at the podium, he really lost it. He started banging things around. He, got he was really out of control. And all I could think of is, and this is the man that's running for mayor? <laughs> and and what I'm, another thing I'm not really crazy about, I'm not crazy about some people who never come to council ever, but when they run for office, they all of a sudden show up and they speak. Now, Doug Miller's been coming to council for years, so his interest is in the city. But like Gary Lewis comes all of a sudden, now we find out he's running for mayor. I said, well, there's why he was, there's the agenda. This is what I'm speaking about. People have to know. And, and I'm looking forward to checking into the, the voting record of Bill Courtright to express what he voted for. I could give you another thing he voted for. There was a loan for $35 million that Mr. Doherty wanted, Mayor Doherty wanted. Billy voted for it. That's just one of many loans that Bill Courtright voted for that we, the taxpayers, have to pay. People don't realize this about him. And I think it's very important to know. And I'm going to check into the voting record, and I'm going to come back to council and say it, whatever it is, about anybody. Mr. Rogan, if, if I agree with you, I'll say. If I don't, I won't. Just, just an example. And Mr. Joyce, you, for example, I think you're brilliant. I think this city would be the, the best financial position with you as tax collector. And they couldn't ask for a more brilliant man. And that's all I have to say. I just wanted to make it clear that people do have a right to come here. And I, I know you don't like half the stuff that people say, but I do believe you feel they have a right to say it. Am I not right, Mrs. Evans? How do you feel about that? No, I, I would agree with that. There are many, many statements that have been made from that podium with which I do not agree. Um, many that I, I knew to be quite misleading. But on the other hand, everyone has a First Amendment right to free speech. And every human being should be respected. And as long as the individual is not um, threatening violence, inciting violence, or using obscene, inappropriate language, they have the right to speak at that podium, whether we agree with them or not, whether we like it or not, but they deserve the respect of our listening. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else? Mrs. Craig. Fifth order, 5A motions. Councilman Rubin. Yes. Do you have any comments or motions tonight? Thank you. Um, just picking up where I left off on the loan portfolio over the last few weeks, um, I'll, I'll address the, the loans that are currently in litigation. And as I mentioned numerous times, this amount totals over $2 million of taxpayer dollars. So I'll read off. These are all in, currently in litigation. We have Danielle and Company for $25,000, 
Fitness 53 Incorporated for $25,000. Gleason Custom kitchen, Kitchens for $50,000. Impanema Grill, $40,000. Paul M. Nardone, DBA Outrageous, $65,000. Scranton Downtown LLC, $143,000. Actually, I apologize. That one is not in litigation. That one is open. Whistles, $64,634.13. Paperless Practice Incorporated, $250,000. Cartanga Wine Families, LLC, $35,000. Vita Tapas Bar and Grill, $120,000. Caché Supris Limited, $60,000. Everest Furniture, $110,000. 408 Cedar LLC, $250,000. Castle Deli Outlet LLC, $25,000. And the biggest of all loans in the entire portfolio, I think everyone knows what one this is, Molly Brannigan's Scranton Irish Pubs, $650,000 of taxpayer dollars. So that is the list of all loans listed on the portfolio that are satisfied, opened, and in litigation. And since I finished with Molly Brannigan's, um, I, I do want to once again bring up the parade. Um, it was brought to my attention that there are two bars in the city that have been closed for quite some time that the city might be allow, allowing them to open specifically for Parade Day. Now obviously for a business owner downtown, Parade Day is probably one of their most profitable days of the year, and I, I certainly wouldn't want to hurt a business owner. But with these two businesses that they may be opening, I do have some questions. Are they approved by the Liquor Control Board? Is there still an active liquor license? Will they be paying mercantile tax to the city on those sales? Um, will all proper procedure be followed? And I really do think it would be unfair for the city to allow businesses to practice, to open for a day or two while you have businesses in the downtown that are open to serve the residents of Scranton 365 days a year or five days a week at least, and then to allow two other businesses just open for, for one day, it, it does seem a little bit unfair. Also on the parade, um, a couple of residents sent me messages today asking what the cost of the parade is to the taxpayers and also if the city will be uh, sending any portion of a bill to the parade committee. So I will send those in uh, to uh, you, Nancy, when, once I get those typed up. Um, so that's obviously an issue, and, and I'm a supporter of the parade. I think it does bring business into the city as long as everything is, is maintained. But it, it is a strain on the downtown, obviously, with added police and uh, blocking off the roads. So I hope once again that it will be a very safe and enjoyable festivity. Um, two other issues that I wanted to bring up. Um, one that is a, a good issue and you know a positive story and one that is, is very saddening. Um, I was contacted by a residents in Pinebrook um, during the week and there was a missing person in the neighborhood. Um, they contacted myself, Chief Graziano, <laughs> and uh, dispatcher, and I'm, I know I'm pronouncing this name wrong, a Lucio from the Pennsylvania State Police. And the man who lives in Pinebrook wandered and walked all the way um, up, up uh, two counties away in Honesdale, or one county away, up in Honesdale, which I'm in my 20s. I don't know if I could make that walk. And through the hard work of, of the Pennsylvania State Police and Chief Graziano and everyone involved, um, the man was found and returned home safely. So that's a very, uh, very good story and, and they deserve a, a job well done for, for that. And finally, I would just hope that everyone would keep in their prayers um, the two prison guards at the federal prison, um, one who was um, stabbed by an inmate and one who actually committed suicide following that. Um, it's a terrible situation that happened and and hopefully the justice system will prevail for the person that uh, committed this terrible act. So I hope everyone keeps them in their prayers. And that is all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Rogan, I was thinking as you were speaking about the parade and the costs involved, um, 
very likely the greatest costs would be those incurred through DPW services clean because there's well. yeah mm -hmm. tremendous cleanup and it would seem that perhaps the businesses who uh, you know enjoy a great uh, financial boost that day uh, might consider contributing to the cost of the DPW overtime cleanup that occurs on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I know that this wouldn't apply to every business, but I, I think, you know, the restaurants, the bars, etc. cetera, um, there, there's an inordinate amount of work that goes on afterwards, and that's the taxpayers absorbing those costs. Absolutely. And it would be very nice if the businesses would be uh, helpful in in sharing those costs mm -hmm. so if you if you want to include that absolutely I'll, I'm gonna type everything up and uh, I'll send that in tomorrow morning thank you and councilman Loscombe do you have any comments or motions tonight uh, I'll pass on comments this evening thank you thank you and councilman Joyce comments or motions yes I'm gonna be rather brief tonight <clears throat> Scranton City Council has received information from the single tax office regarding funds distributed to the city as of the end of February. In regard to current real estate tax collections, the single tax office had collected and distributed $4,893,392.08 to the city. During the same period last year, the office had collected and distributed $3,760,304.08. This is an overall increase of $1,133,088, or a 30.13% increase in current real estate tax collections. Along with current real estate taxes, the single tax office also collects prior year delinquent real estate taxes. As of the end of February, the single tax office collected and distributed $72,072.35. In the prior year, delinquent real estate taxes to the city <coughs> oh. um, during the same period last year, the office had collected and distributed $112,351.95. This is, an all, this is an overall decrease of $40,279.60. In addition, the single tax office also collects the local service tax. As of the end of February, the single tax office collected and distributed $367,399.47 in LST revenue to the city. During the same period last year, the office had collected and distributed $391,380.11. This is an overall decrease of $23,980.64. Finally, the tax office collects the business privilege and mercantile taxes. As of the end of February, the office collected and distributed $32,231.31 and business privilege and mercantile tax revenue to the city. During the same period last year, the single tax office had collected and distributed $20,026.35. This is an overall increase of $12,204.96. In other news tonight, uh, Northeast Revenue has submitted two reports to Scranton City Council. One report concerns delinquent refuse fees, and the other report concerns delinquent real estate taxes. Both reports provide data for the period beginning on February 1st and ending on February 28th. In regard to delinquent refuse fees, Northeast Revenue had collected and distributed $23,300.90 in delinquent refuse fees, and they also collected uh, $17,920.26 in interest associated with those fees. This amounts to a grand total of $41,221.16 in delinquent refuse fees and interest collected and distributed. As one knows, Northeast Revenue collects and distributes delinquent real estate taxes, which, with the exception of the prior year, which is handled by the single tax office. 
During the month of February, Northeast Revenue collected and distributed 53,856.77 in delinquent real estate taxes. I do have a few citizens' requests tonight. Um, first is concerning the 100 and 200 block of North Everett Avenue. Various residents living on the 100 and 200 block of North Everett Avenue have contacted me regarding the condition of their road. Upon visiting these blocks, it can be seen that there are numerous potholes in both blocks scattered throughout the street, which are making travel conditions very difficult for residents. Mrs. Craig, please contact Director Dewar, inform him about the situation, and ask him to handle the situation promptly. As per Mr. Miller's request during the meeting earlier, uh, there are large potholes on the Harrison Avenue Bridge. If we could please add that to the issues to contact Director Dewar about. And as per Mr. Spindler's request, uh, please contact Mr. Dewar and inform him that the street sign um, on the corner of Price Street and North Lincoln is faded and needs replacement. And finally, with the parade, uh, with parade day in Scranton coming up this Saturday, I'd like to remind um, all patrons of the parade to be safe. Uh, don't drink and drive. And if you do drink at the parade, please um, invest in a taxi cab for a ride home and ensure safety to all the patrons of the parade. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Good evening. I wish to apologize for my absence from the last two city council meetings because of illness. I've never taken my duties and responsibilities lightly. And as a result, I continued my work from home because the job of a president is more demanding and extensive than what occurs on Thursday evenings. Also, I'd like to sincerely thank everyone who sent Get Well cards and flowers. Your good wishes and support were deeply appreciated and inspired me to keep on top of the people's work. I have only a few issues to briefly discuss tonight. First, Mrs. Craik, please send a letter to the mayor and the BA requesting a date when the RFP for parking meter management will be advertised and a response on or before March 12th, 2013. I had expected the management to be advertised for bids two weeks ago and spoke to the mayor about such again last week. In addition, city council strongly recommends that the parking meter enhancement program is rebid, particularly in light of the fact that the last bid occurred in 2012 and no contract was awarded. Council prefers that meter resetting or zeroing out at time expiration is included in the bid specs. Second, Mrs. Craig, please send a letter to the Griffin Pond Animal Shelter requesting responses to questions and related data regarding the number of animals delivered by the city's animal control officer and associated costs. I'll provide the questions and related information to our office following tonight's meeting. Third, please schedule a meeting with Mr. Seitzinger and Pinebrook Neighborhood Association officers in council's office ASAP, Mrs. Craig, to settle rooming house inspections in Pinebrook Although I spoke with Mr. Seitzinger on February 14th regarding this issue, it appears that he has assigned neither an, an inspector nor an inspection date. However, in response to questions regarding garbage fees for properties in Pinebrook that were posed by the Neighborhood Association officers, there are two garbage fees and both were paid timely in 2012. Finally, I received a response from Civil Crossroads Consulting Engineers regarding Lake Scranton Road residential concerns, which recommends that four actions are taken at a total cost of $9,800. In addition, any tasks outside the scope of work, for example, meetings, cost estimates, bid packaging, etc., 
will be billed in accordance with the 2013 fee schedule of Civil Crossroads Consulting Engineers, in which hourly rates range from $30 to $75. Now, if my colleagues agree, I will direct Solicitor Hughes to draft appropriate legislation to provide funding from the UDAG account for payment to Civil Crossroads to perform its recommendations. Since the administration has refused to post signage in compliance with the legally and lawfully adopted ordinance of 2012, it clearly would not draft such legislation. If the residents are to be represented and their quality of life protected, then council should pursue its own legislation and prepare to override a mayoral veto of such in the future. And that's it. 5B, granting a special encroachment permit to Regional Hospital of Scranton of 700 Jefferson Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, for the installation of a canopy extending from the applicant's building 21 feet 0 inches, subject to conditions. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C, establishing nine on-street parking spaces in the 700 block of Jefferson Avenue from the intersection of Jefferson and Pine Street, north along Jefferson Avenue through and including the intersection of Jefferson Avenue and Gibson Street in the city of Scranton and repealing inconsistent ordinances. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D, approving the financing by the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority of certain capital projects for the benefit of Community Life Support Systems Incorporated, a Pennsylvania not-for-profit corporation, declaring that it is desirable for the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, and the area served by Community Life Support Systems Incorporated, to have the projects provided by and financed through the authority, designating the mayor of the city, or in his absence, the president or vice president of the city council as the person to act on behalf of the city council as the applicable elected representative within the meaning of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended, authorizing such mayor of the city or the president or vice president of the city council of the city to take certain actions on behalf of the city council of the city as such applicable elected representative and authorizing other necessary and appropriate action. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5E, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract with Abstract Enterprises Incorporated, 628 Spruce Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18503, to provide real estate title searches for approximately 20 to 60 properties scheduled for demolition of hazardous structures through Scranton's Office of Economic and Community Development Department. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, I just wanted to add that uh, this contract was put out to bid and um, the selection made was the lowest responsible bidder. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Six, sixth order, 6A, six no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, seven for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety, for adoption, file of council number eight, 2013, establishing a no parking zone along, along the easterly side of Wyoming Avenue, State Route 3025, from segment 30, offset 2190, 
to segment 30 offset 2410 and along the southerly curb line of Large Street, 175 feet east from its intersection with Wyoming Avenue to allow for safe site distances for proposed McDonald's restaurant at Wyoming Avenue and Large Street. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Public Safety? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, resolution number 8, 2013, accepting a donation of $100 from Anthracite Heritage Museum and Iron Furnaces Association presented to the City of Scranton Fire Department. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Public Safety? As Chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. Um, Mrs. Craig, before we adjourn, um, if uh, we can contact someone in the maintenance department. I think I know what you're going to say, Mrs. Evans. It's funny that you mentioned that I was actually in the mayor's office to sign contracts uh, two days ago. And I asked the mayor's secretary, Stephanie, to leave a note for the mayor that five of our lights were out and our meetings are in the evenings and it's very dark. I also noticed last week after the meeting, the alert emergency lighting was out. So they, uh, Mark Seisinger had told me that was possibly due to a, um, you know, maybe just a fuse. So that's okay, we'll know tonight on our way out. Mm -hmm. But he told me in here that he was waiting to find a, a lift so I expressed my sentiments to the mayor's secretary that I don't think it's all that hard to find a lift mm -hmm. or I'm sure we could use scaffolding or there's also poles you can use. So um, if, if you'd like though, I would, I had the same thought as you, I'll definitely mention it again or. Yes, please, tomorrow. And then, you know, if, if need be, I'll call the mayor and tell him myself because, you know, this is, this is really inexcusable. Uh, if there's no Madam further, President, if I yes. Could, just one issue that came up about the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority tonight yes. on um, item 5D, which is approving uh, the, or at least the ordinance uh, for the financing by community life support systems yes. by the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority. If you would look at section three of the ordinance, it states. The approval granted hereby shall not in any way pledge or obligate the credit or taxing power of the city, nor shall the city be liable for the payment of the principal of or interest on any obligation issued by the authority in connection with the 2013 project. Mm -hmm. So and that issue came up does this, with the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority. Um, at least as to this issue, there's no guarantee Yes. It's just my general understanding that that the city does not guarantee any obligations of the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority. Uh, but at least on, on this issue tonight, on this ordinance, it specifically states that the yes. city of Scranton has no obligation. Thank okay, there, you. There's, there's no guarantee of the city of this uh, financial obligation. Thank you. That validates what I said earlier. And if there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. Today's Outlook.